So the 10 gallon aquarium is by far and away the most popular size aquarium in the hobby. And today I'm gonna to show you some fun fish ideas for your 10 gallon, but we're gonna focus on some pretty cool fish here. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and let's get right into it. So the first fish I wanna talk about are going to be pencil fish. Uh, pencil fish are very underrated in the hobby. I feel they should be way more popular. Uh, there's about 20 different species of pencil fish currently. Some of the more popular species in the hobby are the dwarf pencil fish. The red arc pencil fish is uh, becoming a, a little bit more popular. They're still kind of spendy though. Uh, the Beckford's pencil fish. Uh, what else have we got? The Equios pencil fish. Uh, just, a, uh, just a few of the species, but they're very similar to tetras. They're peaceful schooling they're not uh, insanely active you know they like to just hang around in floating plants so planet tanks are definitely recommended for pencil fish and uh, especially floating plants like I said they'll just hang out in the roots all day long uh, temperature wise they're right in that tropical temperature 72 to 78 and again a great great community fish also a schooling fish so make sure you get a you know a good group of them maybe six at least uh, but they do great with shrimp and Corydoras, Tetras, Rasboras, uh, all just a really, really good fish to pair with pencil fish. So they have been around in the hobby for a while, so they will do well off flake food, uh, but they do enjoy live or frozen as well. And if you want to breed them, I highly recommend live food, baby brine shrimp. They're also known to sometimes graze on algae, most likely, uh, you know, micro crustaceans, things like that, that are living in the algae. That's what they're really going after. But... Uh, you know, a little algae never hurt this species. Not too difficult to breed, but like I said, you'll definitely want live meaty foods if you want to breed them. So yeah, pencil fish, get them. They're awesome. That's my, my first recommendation. So next, I've got a loach that you may have never heard of before, and it is super awesome. The mini dragon loach. Now, I gotta warn you, this loach was really hard to get on film, in focus, in low light. So... A lot of this footage is out of focus and I apologize, but this loach is super awesome. They stay really small. This is adult size. And the cool, cool thing about this loach is that it's like a cross between a baby panda loach and a dwarf chain loach. So baby panda loaches have that black and white, just like these guys, except they lose it as adults. They don't stay that color. Where clearly these guys still have that black and white and their behavior not as boisterous as a dwarf chain loach if you've ever kept dwarf chain loaches you know they're all over the place but uh these guys do spend a fair amount of time just hanging out in the substrate they do like a lot of water flow they're from Th northern thailand there's actually only six places in the world to collect this fish but they're typically found in really shallow fast flowing water uh, so you want to replicate that like many loaches right they like faster water high oxygen levels things like that. Temperature, again, right around that tropical temperature, 75, 78 degrees. pH right around seven, but they can go a little higher, which is cool. They can go up to upwards of uh, eight and a half and uh, almost close to nine, which is pretty cool. Uh, they do feed on worms, uh, crustaceans, things like that. So live frozen foods, again, always important and very peaceful. So again, great for your 10 gallon community tanks, fairly new species to come out into the hobby. So Really cool and probably one that you've never seen before. And I've actually never seen these in person until now. I've only read about them. So I'm really excited to be able to see them. They're a really cool fish. If you can get your hands on them, definitely pick some up. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about the Neon Green Rasbora. If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that this is my absolute favorite species of Rasbora. The Neon Green is actually truly neon green. They look amazing. A lot of people say they won't look good in planet tanks because they're green. That is false. They look amazing in planet tanks. Also extremely peaceful uh, schooling fish. So, you know, you're, you're going to want to get a group of them, at least six. Uh, they get about an inch long, so perfect for a 10 gallon aquarium. Now they can go a little cooler. So down into like the low 70s, up, upwards of 80 degrees, pH around 6.0 to 7.0. So they take a very wide range of water parameters, which is nice. Uh, they'll eat on basically any food you give them, but high quality flake, uh, frozen, freeze dried, live food. The more varied the diet, the healthier they're gonna be. Another one that's not too hard to breed. Uh, if you're familiar with egg scattering fish, these are egg scatterers. So yeah, not that hard to breed. They've been bred quite a lot. Most of the ones you're gonna get in the hobby are. So I don't wanna spend too much time on the, the green rasbora. I've done so many videos on this fish. They're just super awesome and great for your uh, 10 gallon tanks. 
All right, next up, we got a Danio, and Danios are another fish that I feel should be way more popular in the hobby. I mean, just talk about awesome fish overall, super active, fast swimming, great schoolers. Uh, but specifically, we're gonna talk about the orange hatchet Danio. They get a little bit over an inch, again, a schooling fish, so six minimum, and they love, love, love planted tanks. So if you got a planted little uh, 10 gallon tank, this is a perfect fish for you. Uh, again, a fish that's been around for a while, so any quality flake food, but always supplement with some, you know, frozen live foods. Another very peaceful species that has really only one demand for water, and that is that they like, they like it a little cooler. So anything over 76, uh, definitely 78 is like max. They definitely like uh, a cooler water. So actually a really good fish for a 10 gallon uh, unheated tank. Also another very easy fish to spawn like most Danios, uh, egg scattering fish. So just if you want to breed them, just set your tank up for egg scatters and you can have all the fry you want. However, you're definitely going to need small live food for the fry. But as you can see, just a super active, fun little fish that would go great in a 10 gallon aquarium. So next up on the list, we have one of my favorite all time fish and that is the Cooley Loach. I am so much in love with this fish. I think they're super awesome. Now a lot of people say that they're a really shy fish, but in my experience, it's just not true. Uh, they're not a schooling fish. However, they are a social fish. So if you get, you know, just one of these guys, they're never going to come out. They're going to hide all the time. Definitely get a group of them. They'll all be out. I mean, you can see them here just out in the open. Yeah, they're being enticed by food, but still just out in the open, hanging out, eating food. So the bigger the group, the better. Uh, you know, they do get three to four inches, but they're really small fish. So they you can get away with a good group of them in a 10 gallon tank. And they're just super fun to watch. They're super peaceful. They generally won't go after fish or shrimp. They'll just leave everyone alone. Uh, they live they live a long time, about 10 years, which is pretty good and uh, omnivore so they'll just graze on anything so a lot of people do consider them to be cleaner fish uh, like cleanup crew and that's true they will go around in the substrate and they'll just kind of graze on all the leftover food but you need to make sure that they're actually getting food so you just can't throw in flake and assume that they're going to eat it uh, if you have other fish in there they might get it all first and you know a lot of times these do starve out because people just assume that they're cleaner fish and they're getting all the leftovers when sometimes there's just not much left over so Super awesome fish. Make sure you're feeding them. Get them in a good size group and you'll just have a ton of fun with these in a 10 gallon tank. Next up, I want to talk about one of my favorite Tetras. Definitely, I don't know if I'd go top five, but definitely a top 10 Tetra for me. And that's the Ember Tetra. Uh, they get right around an inch, a little bit bigger. Uh, as you can see, Ember Tetras, they're red. They look so good in planted tanks. They really contrast the green plants just amazingly super peaceful of course uh, they do like it about 76 degrees ph and be anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half so just a really good fish that can go in just about any type of water you got out there now if you don't get enough ember tetras they can be a little shy so again schooling fish uh it seems to be a, a theme going on here but uh, honestly for a 10 gallon i'd probably get at least eight maybe a dozen of them make sure you have lots of plants whether live or fake for them to just kind of hide in school around, hang out. They're another egg scatterer that if you keep them well fed, they will just breed nonstop in your aquarium. Now, most of the time they're going to eat the eggs, but uh, if, it's, if it's heavily planted enough, you'll get, you'll get some fry survive. And it's another fish that will eat just about anything. Super easy fish to take care of and just really, really great color. All right, folks, there you have it. Some fish that I would put in a 10 gallon tank. Now there's a thousand other fish and invertebrates that would do well in a 10 gallon tank. This video could have been hours long, but no one watches hours long videos. So well, let me know down below what your favorite fish or shrimp or snail, whatever, is to put in a 10 gallon aquarium. And I will see you all on the next video.